Welcome to Brooks Kids Live. It's me, Janelle, and Abby as your hosts. Thank you for joining us on another Saturday. Hello, Janelle, and hello to all parents, children, and all of our presenters. How has your week been? My week has been great. I hope you have all gotten over the loss of England not winning the European Cup. I was sad, but it's not the end of the world. Yes, we were all disappointed. But at least England have next year. And we're at the end of the school year. And before you know it, we'll be cheering for the Olympic team. We have made some updates to our website. And now, whether you're a parent, teacher or a child, you can join our free, secure, Christ-centered online platform where children can complete their own profile, add photos, videos, download files, post, write posts, talk on forms and discussion boards, collect badges and awards, and get access to exclusive members-only events. Parents and teachers, you too can join our free online platform and get access to exclusive members-only training, discount codes when purchasing our resources from our shop, as well as create your own private or public groups to engage with Brooks kids and adults alike. Nowhere else will you find an online platform that is child targeted, application based, gift and needs oriented and focuses on developing a growth mindset in children. By you joining us in and moderating the forms and discussion boards, you are helping to lay the foundation for our Brooks Kids children and building a community of leaders. To do this, just visit our website, www.brickskids.org and sign up your child and yourself. You will also get 25 bonus points and an opportunity to win a gift. While you are on the website, you can click on the donate button where you can be a blessing to us. We welcome any support you can give and we thank you in advance. And don't forget there are lots more resources that you can access and share with your friends and family. Today, we are focusing on being humble. We will learn why humility is better than selfishness. Before we hear from our humble presenters, let's sing our song. Remember, be humble at all times and trust Jesus. Welcome back to Brakes Kids Live. 
So, what does it mean to be a humble person or to have humility? You can type your answers down below in the chat. To be humble means not to be proud or arrogant. So why is it good to be humble? Humility is in fact one of the most powerful and important qualities of growth. Being humble helps us to build trust and aid learning, which are key aspects of leadership and personal development. So what does spotting the difference have to do with being humble and humility, you might ask? Well, Naaman sought out to Elisha to help heal him from his leprosy, a disease that left his skin all spotted and gross. When Naaman followed Elisha's instructions, he was healed. But when Elisha's servant Gehazi acted selfishly, he was stricken with the same leprosy that Naaman was healed from. Our memory verse says, James 4 verse 1. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Everybody wants to be great and praised or glorified. We wouldn't say so or feel that way all the time, but it's a part of living in this world. Just like England wanted to win the football to be praised and glorified. Sometimes it is the things we want, like getting respect we feel we deserve or living in the comfort and pleasure we desperately want. God asks us not to pursue those things. Instead, he calls us to trust him to exalt us when the time is right without trying to get that glory for ourselves. God promises to make it about us when and how he sees it fits. Paul described Jesus's life on earth in Philippians 2. Jesus, God himself, refused to fight for his right to be glorified. He made himself nothing. Philippians 2 verse 17 and became a servant even to death. Then when the time was right, the father exalted Jesus to the highest place and gave him the name that is above all names. Philippians 2 verse 9. This is the absolute perfect example of being humble. Our presenters will help us understand more about being humble. But before we hear from our presenters, let's have another song and remember. Be humble at all times and trust Jesus. <laughs> Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give him everything, he's good in every way. He is always there for us, he's good in every way. Pouring out his awesome love, he's good in every way. He fills us up with peace and joy, he's good in every way. Is there for us? He's good in every way. 
king. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give him everything. He's good in every way. He's good in every way. He's good in every way. Thank you, Abby and Janelle. Hello, my name is Wally. I'm a Bricks Kids presenter. Today I'll be talking to you about Spot the Difference. The big question for today is, what do you think the story will be about today? The Bible text I'll be referring to today is 2 Kings 5 verse 11. But Naaman was furious and went away and said, Behold, I thought, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. To me, this means that Naaman was angry that the prophet Elisha didn't just come out and heal him. Today, I'll give you a quick summary of the story of Naaman. According to the Bible, Naaman was a commander of the army of Syria. He was a good commander and was held in favour because of the victory that God brought him. Yet Naaman was a leper. Naaman's wife had a servant girl from Israel who said that a prophet there would be able to heal him. Another Bible text is Luke 4 verse 27. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha. The prophet and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. The song that will be singing for you today is entitled This Week. what God has brought me out of. You can't even tell when you look at me. I've been in a season of miracles. This is... I cannot explain it. This may not make sense. I know what it looks like, but I choose to go against that. And I'm speaking something different. I'm speaking something different. I'm claiming something different. Expecting something different. Say, I cannot explain it. This may not make sense. I know what it looks like when I choose to go against that And I'm speaking something different I'm speaking something different I'm claiming something different Expecting something different This week will be a week for miracles This week will be a week for miracles This week Will be a week for miracles, miracles, miracles. I cannot explain it. This may not make sense. I know what it looks like, but I choose to go against that. And I'm speaking something different. I'm speaking something different. I'm claiming something different. Expect something different. I cannot explain it. This may not make sense. I know what it looks like when I choose to go against that. And I'm speaking something different. I'm speaking something different. I'm claiming something different. Expect something different. This week will be a week for. Miracles this week will be a week for miracles. This week will be a week for miracles, miracles, miracles. This week will be a week for miracles. This week will be a week for miracles. This week will be a week for miracles, miracles, miracles. I don't have to wait till I see it. I'm a praising, I'm a praising now, cause I believe it. I don't have to wait, I don't have to wait till I see it. 
I'm a praise him, I'm a praise him now, cause I believe him. This week will be a week for miracles. This week will be a week for miracles. This week will be a week for miracles, miracles, miracles. I don't have to wait till I see you. I will praise him now, cause I believe him. I don't have to wait, I don't have to wait till I see him. I'm a praise him, I'm a praise him now, cause I believe him. Your miracles on the way, your miracles on the way. 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 Thank you for listening. See you next week. And now we'll head over to Diana for her Bible adventure. Eureka! We found it! Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Diana, your Brits Kids Story presenter. And I'm going to take you on today's Bible adventure. Here's a gross statement. Who here has ever had egg on their face? I'm sure as babies, learning to eat eggs for the first time, you had it on your face, in your hair, on your clothes, and especially on the floor. Eggs are messy. And in their raw form, they are kind of gross. It's the stuff weightlifters and professional fighters add to their protein drinks. But no normal person would dare to eat, much less smear on their face. Of course, having egg on your face is an expression that means something completely different than literally having raw egg on one's face. Having egg on your face means looking foolish. It means that you thought you knew what you were saying or doing, and you were wrong. You were very publicly wrong. And instead of looking like the brilliant genius you thought you were, you looked foolish like a chef who mishandled an egg and thus has egg all over his or her face. There's a word that describes how we end up with egg on our face. That word is pride. Pride is a selfish motivation. Pride
Pride wants to look good. Pride wants to get ahead. Pride wants to look smart. Pride wants to get all the glory. People who are proud can end up with egg on their face. All because they overestimate their own brilliance or importance. They take a seat at the head of the dinner table, only to be asked to move down so that someone more important can sit there. Pride makes us think that we know better than everyone else. And it makes us look foolish when we are proven wrong. Pride tells us that we don't need to follow directions or check the recipe. And it leaves us, you guessed it, with egg on our face. Today's Bible story is about two men, one of whom ended up with egg on his face and the other, well, he had an even bigger problem. He had a skin disease called leprosy. Join me as we find out exactly what happened. See you in a moment. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way. God's love changed me more than I can say. Can't keep this in, gotta let it out. Gonna tell the whole world that your love is spinning me around and around. Yeah, it's turning me upside down. I can't believe the way you love me more than I can contain. I'm gonna turn around and give, give, give it away. great man, so mighty and brave, he was well respected. But one morning he woke up and he was covered from head to toe with gross spots and ugly sores. He had his 
skin disease called leprosy. I told Mrs. Naaman that I know a prophet who lives in Samaria who could heal Captain Naaman. So Captain Naaman went to the king and told him what I had said. The king told Naaman to go to Samaria and that he could give him a letter to take to the king of Israel. Captain Naaman packed for his trip. He took 750 pounds of silver and 150 of gold and 10 changes of clothes along with the letter. And then he left to go and find the king of Israel. The king of Israel was upset by the letter Naaman gave him and he tore his clothes saying, I'm not God. I can't kill and make alive again. Why does this man send someone with a harmful skin disease for me to heal? You can see that the king of Aram is trying to start trouble with me. Elisha the prophet heard about the king tearing up his clothes and asked Naaman to come and see him. Captain Naaman went to see Elisha. Have you finished folding those clothes? Oh, sorry. Elisha sent his servant out to meet Naaman with a message telling Naaman to go and wash in the river Jordan seven times. Then he would be healed. Sorry, I'm not very good at this. Captain Naaman, who was a very proud man, didn't want to look foolish. He felt insulted that Elisha didn't even bother to come and talk to him face to face. And to make matters worse, he told Naaman to go and wash in the dirty river of Jordan. Not just once, but seven times. He was so angry. His servant who had travelled with him advised him. But as they had come all this way, he might as well do as Elisha said. Captain went down to the river and dipped in. Not once, not twice, but seven times. And guess what? He came out clean. His skin was all new again, just like a newborn baby. He was so grateful that he went back to Elisha to say thank you. He begged Elisha to take the gifts that he had brought, but Elisha refused. Captain Naaman promised to only serve Elisha's God, the one and only true God. Then he left. When Naaman humbled himself and washed his body in the river, his disease was cured. Naaman learned that it is humility, not pride, that can lead us to blessings from God. His willingness to be humble led him to be free of a terrible disease. As I said earlier though, this is a story of two men. The other man I refer to 
Not Elisha, but Elisha's servant, Gezi. Shortly after Naaman left, the servant chased after him. He saw an opportunity to gain wealth from the situation. And he lied to Naaman in order to gain some wealth of his own. God saw straight through the servant's actions. And the servant became cursed with the same disease that afflicted Naaman. Gezi had more than just egg on his face. His selfishness led to a serious led to a serious case of leprosy. God wants us to be humble. He wants us to consider others better than ourselves. He wants us to submit to his authority. Humility brings blessings, but selfishness, well, that can lead to ruin. This has been me, Diana, your Prince Kid Story Presenter. Until next time! going to make a homemade kaleidoscope. Let's get started. What we need for this craft is a tissue paper roll, an empty one, three, piece, three pieces of paper, a mirror paper, tape, glue and colouring pens. First what you'll do is decorate your three pieces of paper so you need to cut your mirror paper into pieces of paper about this size after you've cut it into three strips get your three pieces of mirror paper and put and get them put the mirror bit in the inside and make a triangle shape like this and use the tape and tape the bit these bits to connect them after that afterwards get your tissue paper roll 
and decorate it with pens and colours. For mine, which I've decorated here, I've used gold glitter and some colouring pens. After that, put your things aside. Then, get your three pieces of paper and start decorating them. So, I'm going to finish the one I started off. Once you've decorated your um, pieces of paper, put them aside. Now, Get your tissue paper roll and your mirror paper and put the mirror paper into the tissue paper roll. Like this. Right. Now, it should look like this. Afterwards, get one of your favourite pieces of, of your pieces of paper and put it underneath your piece of the tissue paper look into the piece of tissue paper and there you go you have a kaleidoscope as you can see it looks very cool This is the story we can learn. It just started as an ordinary piece of paper, nothing on it at all. But then we added lots of pretty patterns to it. And you can see the lights. This is like Naaman. He had leprosy, but then he got washed by the blood of Jesus. Like we are cleansed by Jesus every day. He helps us and when we need help, he hears us. Bye boys and girls, thank you for listening to my presentation. Work and wash away my sin Nothing but the blood of Jesus Work and make me pure within Nothing but the blood of Jesus
but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Spot the Difference by Christian at Bricks Kids. Hi, friends, my name is Christian and I work at Bricks Kids. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, like this video, and hit that notification button so you don't miss a thing. Today on Bricks Kids, our theme is Spot the Difference. So, what do I mean by Spot the Difference? Don't worry, I'll explain it all for you. A very good Bible text to remember is James 4 verse 6 and it reads, But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud but shows favour to the humble. Think about the story of Naaman. Naaman was a leper. That's somebody who has leprosy. This was an even bigger problem as Naaman was the commander of the army of the king of Aram. This meant Naaman was a very, very important man. He was a very brave soldier which made him very popular. There was no cure for leprosy in those days. Leprosy is a terrible disease. You get spots and they turn white and your skin falls off and you have absolutely no sense of feeling. When no doctor could help, a young Israelite servant girl remembered what God had done for Israel. The servant girl suggested that Naaman should go to see Elisha the prophet for a cure. So Naaman took his soldiers and treasures and went to Israel to see Elisha. Now Elisha didn't want money, he didn't even come to the door. He just sent his servants to tell Naaman to dip in the Jordan River seven times. Naaman was furious and he felt disrespected and on top of that he had to dip in that dirty Jordan River and as if once wasn't disgusting enough, he had to dip in it seven times. Naaman wanted to go home. He was ready to bathe in one of his clean rivers. 
totally opposite of that dirty, muddy, gloppy Jordan River. One of Naaman's soldiers said to him, What's the big deal? You've conquered many countries, so how hard can it be to dip in water? Naaman realised that his soldier was right and went to dip in the Jordan River. One, two, no change. Three, no change. Four, five, no change. Six, no change. But seven, he was healed. He was cured and he realised that God was the only true God. So the moral of that story is to be humble because that's how Naaman got his healing. Another great text is Psalm 25 verse 9 and it reads, He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. Another text is Ephesians 4 verse 2 and it reads, Be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. The end. Thanks for watching and remember to be humble. Bye. Funny bit coming up. This time I'm going to kick that football clear to the moon! Ah! Hi, my name is Jaden. This week you'll be focusing on being humble. My Bible text is taken from James chapter 4 verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Facts about golden apple. Golden apple which is also known as June plum is a juicy fruit with greenish yellow colour and pineapple like scent. It is commonly found in Caribbean South Pacific. The golden apple grows abundantly in Suriname and considered to be a tropical fruit. Impressive health benefits of golden apples. Reduce cholesterol, strengthen bones, treat scurvy, control blood pressure, treat food allergies, improve breast milk production, protect liver, prevent anemia, Treat digestive problems and control blood sugar. Spot the difference between golden delicious and golden apple. Type your answers in the chat. Healthy treat to make with golden apples. You can make Jamaican stew plum. A refreshing glass of golden apple juice and you can make golden apple cake. Gahazi had many opportunities to overcome temptation. One of them was when Elisha asked him where he had been. He could have said the truth and said that he was sorry. Did God give Gahazi a way of escape when he was tempted? Yes, he did. The Bible says, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. This Bible text is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. I'm going to sing a song about being humble. Some days we are up, some days we are down. Just trust God and be humble and you will gain a crown. Some days we are up, 
some days go down just for scored and be humble and you will gain the crown always be open and listen to others helping others spread up big or small let god guide you in your life and get ready for his big call some days we are up some days we are down just for scored and be humble and you will gain the crown some days you are up some days we are down just for scored and be humble and you will gain the crown always be open and listen to others helping others whether big or small let god guide you in your life and get ready for his big call some days we are up some days we are down just for scored and be humble and you will gain the crown always be open and listen to others helping others whether big or small let god guide you in your life and get ready for his big call some days we are up some days we are down just trust god and be humble and you will gain the crown thanks for watching and don't forget trust jesus Amazing Facts with Angelina Oh, hi there! I didn't see you! I was so busy! Welcome to Amazing Facts with Angelina I'm looking for spotted animals in the African savanna. Can you see any? Yes, not. So let's keep walking. <gasps> Look! A giraffe! Wow! Let's learn some more facts about giraffes while I continue my adventure. Giraffes. These majestic animals can be found in the dry savannas of Africa. There, they roam the open plains and woodlands. The giraffe is the tallest land animal on earth. They can grow up to 5.5 meter tall. That is taller than three adult human beings. Amazing! The, the giraffe spots are unique. No two giraffes have the same pattern, just like no two human beings have the same fingerprints. Now I'm looking for cheetahs. Cheetahs are very fast. And they grind you in the savannah of grass. Hmm. I don't see any cheetahs yet. Let's keep going. Cheetahs. All wild cheetahs except a few can be found in sub-Saharan Africa. You can find a large population in Angola, Botswana, Malawi, Mozambique, and Namibia. You can find a few in Iran also. The cheetah is the fastest land animal in the world. A cheetah can run up to 112 kilometers per hour in just three seconds. That's faster than a sport car can accelerate. Sprinting at such a great speed uses a lot of energy, so a cheetah's chase can only last for less than a minute. A cheetah can have up to 2,000 spots on their body. Now I'm in the African jungle. I'm looking for leopards. But I don't see any. Do you? Some facts about leopards are that they're solitary animals. That means 
they like to be alone. Leopards usually hunt at night and they normally take their food up into the trees. Oh! There's a leopard behind me! Where did it go? The fur camouflages with the jungle. Leopards can be found in various places around the world. They live in Sub-Saharan Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa are areas that are south of the Sahara Desert. They also live in Northeast Africa, Central Asia, India and China. Leopards are very fast cats and can run up to 58 kilometers per hour. They're super springy too and can leap six meters forward through the air. That's the length of three adults lying head to toe. Now I'm in the rainforest of Guyana. Isn't it beautiful? It's also very hot. But I came here to show you this jaguar. It's the third largest cat in the world and the largest cat in South America. Jaguar comes from the Native American word yagua, which means he who kills with one leaf. A jaguar's scientific name is Panthera onca. Jaguars can live to be 15 years old in the wild. Can you spot the difference between the jaguar and the leopard? Which one is the leopard and which one is the jaguar? I'm sure you are confused. Both the jaguars and the leopards are known by their yellow or orange coats that have dark spots. These dark spots are called rosettes. Both jaguars and leopards have rosette patterns on their coats. The difference lies in the spots. The jaguar's rosettes have spots inside of them. The leopard does not. The rosettes on a leopard are like jagged edges with black circles that are smaller and are closer together. Now it's time for our Did You Know with Nicholas. Did you know that Dalmatians can run as fast as horses? Dalmatians are medium sized dogs and are well known for their black or brown spotted white coat. These breed of dogs have been used in the past as carriages. They can run as fast as horses. Can an Ethiopian change its skin or a leopard its spots? Neither can you do good if you are accustomed to doing evil. Jeremiah chapter 13 verse 23. This means that one cannot change their character or personality, no matter how hard they try. Only God can change us to be humble, selfless and caring. Until next time, it's me, Angelina, going away. The sun is shining down on me My heart is full of love and peace God's given me so much I want the world around to see How much he really means to me God's given me so much So I'm gonna get my hands up I'm gonna get my hands up And wave them all around Wave them up and down I'm gonna get my Jump up, jump up to the sky, way up to the sky, and I'm gonna give a shout out, I'm gonna make it so loud, so that everyone around is gonna see what God has given.
talking to me. The sun is shining down on me. My heart is full of love and peace. God's given me so much. I want the world around to see how much he really means to me. God's given me so much. So I'm gonna get my hands up. I'm gonna get my hands up. Wave them all around. Wave them up and down. I'm gonna get my To me. Hi friends, welcome back to your Bible Art Challenge with me, Janelle. Today we're going to be doing some pointillism. For this art challenge, you will need paper, cotton buds or Q-tips, you might need a pencil, some paint, and some extra Q-tips or cotton buds. First, get one of your Q-tips and draw any design you want. Remember, our theme is on being humble, so maybe you could draw something, whatever humbleness means to you. doing pointillism you don't draw you do dots to make a picture what does humbleness mean to you you can type your answers in the chat below The pencil is to draw your design if you think if you think you're gonna mess up. You get your Q-tip, dip it in the paint, draw your design on the paper, then get your Q-tip again and draw around. You can draw on the line or around the line and then on the line. Now I've finished my picture of what I think humble, to be humble is. And also, I did a love heart that says, Bricks Kids! I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed doing your Bible Art Challenge. Until next week, bye! So
back to Mindful Minutes with me, Abby. Today we've been talking about Naaman. Looking at these two men from the outside, you would think that Naaman would be the proud one and Gehazi the humble. Naaman was an important official with great power and authority. He had so many reasons to be proud. He also came to see that he had no choice but to submit to God's commands. Naaman humbled himself, waded into the water and found what he was looking for. God blessed Naaman's humility and Naaman came away as a changed man. Gehazi should have known better than to be selfish. As the servant of Elisha, one of the most powerful prophets in the Old Testament history, he knew the teachings of God. He had witnessed Elisha's previous confrontations with the proud and powerful. He had witnessed Naaman's miraculous healing. Moreover, he should have known better than to think he could get away with it. God knew Gehazi's heart and he revealed this selfish action to Elisha. It was God who humbled Gehazi by striking him down with the same disease that Naaman had endured. The story of Naaman and Gehazi is a reminder of what God said to Samuel in 1 Samuel 16 verse 7. We tend to judge people by what's on the outside, but God looks at our hearts. God is looking for humility over pride. He wants to see giving instead of selfishness. He wants to see obedience instead of ego. When we humble ourselves, God will bless us in ways we can't even imagine. There are far worse things that, than having egg on your face, as Gehazi found out when he tried to steal from Naaman. When we give to pride and selfishness, God will know and we will face the consequences of our actions. So today, ask God to give you a humble heart. Be humble by following God. Be humble by serving others. When we humble ourselves and obey God, we will be blessed. Until next time, bye!
added for today's lesson summary. We've come to the end of our show and we just want to thank you for tuning in today. Do remember, we have only one more week before virtual VBS from July the 26th to July the 31st. Also, we have Friday favorites every Friday at 7.30 p.m. Remember to get your resources for virtual VBS because we don't want you to miss out on all the fun that we'll be having. Remember to check out our website and register for free on our online platform. Subscribe to Facebook and YouTube channel videos. Don't forget to follow us, like and subscribe so you never miss any of our shows or posts. Thank you to all our presenters and contributors and those who shared singing and a special thanks to Life Your Kids for the music. Our memory verse says, James 4 verse 10, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Join us next week where our focus will be straight from the fish's mouth. I thought it was from the horse's mouth. But you'll have to join us to find out what we'll be discussing. So remember, be humble at all times and trust Jesus. It's bye, bye from me and Janelle and all of our Bricks Kids presenters. Until next time, bye. the